watching us from the virtual platform. Uh, Recording in progress. Committee Secretary, can you ensure that uh, people who are going to present, they log in at least five minutes before so that you can do your test screening then and not when we are supposed to start. Noted. Is that another? So, thanks, Jack. Thank you very much, uh, members. Uh, uh, good morning. I can see Honorable Dennis Breitenbach is here. Honorable Engelberg, I think, yes, we do form a quorum now. Honorable Jelle, yes, we do form a quorum. Uh, can Committee Secretary, do we have any apologies? No, Chair, no, cha I don't have apologies on my side. Thanks. Yes, I have one apology on my side. I received an apology from Honorable Swart that he's experiencing serious network problems, but he will try to be part of the meeting, but uh, his bandwidth is very low. Um, uh, from time to time, he will be able to speak, but uh, his, uh, his connections is very, is very unpredictable. Uh, that is the apology I have received, and we know that uh, Honorable um, Velmani Wojtrachan is still ill to post until the 21st of March, so she will not be part of us. That is the apology we received uh, last week. Um, Honorable Engelberg, your apology is for tomorrow, is that correct? Uh, Honorable Engelbert. Honorable Glenis Breitenbach. He still can't speak, so I think it's a DA thing. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, careful, Mr. Janky, I know where you live. Um, uh, yes, Mr. Engelbrecht's apologies for tomorrow, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, but what I actually wanted to talk to you about was the Honorable um, Niva Drachen. Um, I know that she's back home, back home now. Yes. And I was wondering if um, if you would inquire from her if it might be appropriate for those who are able in, in Cape Town to visit her. Okay. No, I will do that. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I will do that. I know I was speaking to her yesterday uh, that uh, everything is going well, but I will inquire. I will inquire from her. Thank you very much for that, Honorable Breitenbach. Um, I guess that was the last hand on the apologies. Um, I also received a letter. I thought that uh, I think let's start and discuss it before we go to Honorable, in fact, Mr. Robertson. I received a letter from uh, Mr. Hank. Uh, I think it was circulated uh, that he would not be in a position to proceed next week. Uh, with the responses on the land court bill, um, he underestimated the work of the amount of work that needs to be done. So um, he will be he was is asking for seven days more from the fifteenth. Um, so my proposal to the committee is that uh, as we had already given him an option to, to, to report later that we should accept uh, that um, uh, he must bring uh, quality work to the committee. So there will be no point in insisting that uh, he proceeds next week if he will not be ready. But let's look at how far do we go uh, in processing the cannabis bill. If we have not gone far enough, I propose that next week on the 15th, we proceed with the cannabis bill, but if we have proceeded far enough, we can be able to make that assessment tomorrow. If we would have proceeded uh, far enough, then we can uh, speak to Honorable Janji that that day be taken by the subcommittee 
and then we take the day of the 1st of April as a committee day where we can do our internal work, including uh, reviewing the program. In fact, the reviewing the progress that we have made this year. Um, and since the the last uh, uh, the last uh, that we had as a study group um, and plan properly for the next term. Uh, but that will be based on the progress we are making with the cannabis bill because it's quite urgent that we should finish the thing. Uh, but I think uh, let's have a discussion tomorrow after we would have made an assessment as to how far we are progressing with this bill. Will that be in order, members? Agreed, Chair. Um, Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Roberts, uh, good morning and welcome. Uh, you can take us through the cannabis bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, let me just share it. Um, okay, um, previously uh, in the committee, I did take the committee through the bill, and um, there were certain discussions. I also indicated that I did not meet with uh, Judge Gordon, um, and I was also requested to submit um, certain articles um, to the committee regarding the effect of cannabis on fetal development. First, let me report on the meeting with uh, Judge Gordon. I did meet with him, uh, mainly in respect of the offenses and appropriate um, penalties that sh should be imposed. Um, is, uh, what he indicated is the effect that we should treat cannabis mainly similar to alcohol. And um, the penalties or offenses in the bill must to a large extent correspond with those um, that is imposed in respect of alcohol offenses. Um, I did uh, submit a meta article regarding research uh, on fetal development and the effect of cannabis they run to the committee. Um, it mainly indicates what I did, did discuss previously, that uh, there is an effect on fetal development. It's mainly similar to that of alcohol, tobacco, and um, it's still very inconclusive of what the full extent of um, alcohol and fetal development, uh, sorry, uh, THC on fetal development will be. Um, going to go through the various sections of the Act, there are some new proposals uh, in this regard. Um, the first one relates to our definition of adult person. Um, and previously we did propose uh, a probable increase there to, to other ages than 18 years. And uh, I must indicate that uh, first, if you look to the Prince Judgment, the Prince Judgment itself, uh, cannabis, uh, legalized cannabis in respect of an adult person, and make a differentiation between an adult and a child. And it's my submission, if you look at the Prince judgment, you will see that uh, it did take into account the current uh, definition of old adult in South African law, as well as that of a child, namely that the adult is a person above, above 18 years, and the child is a person under the age of 18 years. So to probably expand it to higher age, uh, will be contrary to the Prince judgment. There was also discussions about the harmful effect uh, of THC on uh, young adults under the age of 18 years. And um, I did other research, among others, to uh, foreign uh, jurisdictions. And one can 
make the assumption that foreign jurisdictions treat the adult age for legal or, legal, or rather the age for cannabis use similar to that of the um, alcohol legislation. And that is in the US states in line with the uh, alcohol legislation that it said the age of 21 years. Canada and Uruguay and Australia capital territories and also the proposed legislation in New South Wales in accordance with the alcohol legislation um, the age of 18 years has been determined. Um, in terms of uh, the Canadian provinces, um, although the Cannabis Act did provide for age limitation of 18 years, um, one, if one look at the provincial legislation, there was an age increase to 19 years. Um, there is a... Uh, an article of Professor Salman, who amongst others discuss or compare the harms of alcohol and that of THC on a person. And he came to the conclusion that alcohol and cannabis is mainly similar. He actually made a remark to the effect that uh, alcohol may in certain circumstances be more harmful. Um, I did refer previously to a particular South African legislation regarding the distinction between adult and a child. Um, must refer, amongst others, to our constitution, um, section 28, that deals with protected rights in respect of children. And uh, in terms of the constitution, for purposes of 28, uh, a child is defined as a person under the age of 18 years. The effect thereof is that the person is an adult um, if he attains the age of 18 years. Um, the Children's Act, we provide for the age of majority, and that's 18 years. Must refer to the Child Justice Act, where this is a limited exception in respect of how to deal with certain offenses in terms of that act. And under certain circumstances, um, they regard a person under the age of 21 years, in limited circumstances, um, as a child or a person that's subject to the Child Justice Act. But it's submitted, it is in relation to procedures applicable to deal with certain persons in terms of the Child Justice Act. I also did refer previously to the Tobacco Control Act and uh, legal legislation and the age that has been established for legal use thereof is 18 years. So my submission is that we should not amend uh, the definition of adult for purposes of the cannabis bill. Going to stop there. Thank you very much, uh, members. We had discussed this issue last, uh, last week or when Mr. Roberts appeared before us. And the general view or general consensus except Honorable uh, Swart was that we should stick with 18. Um, can we have hands whether we proceed and to stick to 18 or we take uh, Mr. Honorable Swartz, view of 21. Bearing in mind that uh, almost uh, uh, the literature and uh, the, the principle is that uh, we should be, to, to a greater extent, but not be differentiating uh, alcohol and, 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 uh, and cannabis. Is there a view that is different to 18 years? Honorable Jale. Chairperson, good morning. Oh, sorry, Honorable Swart, and then Honorable Jale, is your hand up? Yes, yes, Chair, my hand is up. Okay, Honorable Swart, and then Honorable Jale. Uh, Chair, thank you for the input. I do appreciate the um, research 
but I still think that we are not giving sufficient attention to the public health issues arising from the access of children to cannabis. I will stick with my position of 21, although I do understand the issue relating to legal certainty um, around the age of 18. But I just want to emphasize, again, those members that read the research document that was provided, that there are recent reports indicating an increase in adverse health outcomes linked to the regular use of cannabis, including motor vehicle accidents, drug-induced psychotic symptoms and psych disorders, HIV, hepatitis, B and C, tuberculosis. Now, these are serious issues, Chair, and what makes it aggravates it even more is the possibility of children having access to cannabis. The department itself said on page five of its comments, legalization will definitely give rise to increased use of cannabis, not only by adults, but also by children due to availability. And it is acknowledged that increased cannabis consumption will require a proportional increase of the already under-resourced measures to deal with harms associated with cannabis. So I appreciate the concerns about alcohol. Yes, we need to deal with that as well. But does that then mean that we make cannabis more freely access to children or even indirectly? I think that it's not wise. We're approaching this very narrowly. We're not considering the public health aspects and we're leaving that to other departments to deal with under the Medical and the Substance Abuse Act. So, Chair, thank you for that. I will stick with my position. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Jale. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and good morning, uh, colleagues. Uh, mine, it was just Chairperson. I think uh, maybe there's one point that I've missed uh, uh, in terms of access, uh, particularly on the those who are 18 at who are still at school. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe I missed that uh, discussion because I was on and off, on and off a, a chair because uh, I wanted to find out uh, if maybe have we made uh, maybe some uh, restrictions because if the age uh, is 18, we, which we don't have, but have a problem with that one. I don't have a problem with that one. But uh, my, my, my question will be, because at uh, high school, we still have those who are 18. Uh, how are we maybe accommodating that issue? Uh, that of saying, uh, if they can have it uh, and use it at the school premises, uh, uh, what would happen to other children who are still young? And maybe I, I, I missed the discussion when we were talking about the age and then also bringing that one in. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Jela. Uh, let me remind uh, people on the virtual platform that people who are allowed to discuss now, it's members of parliament and the department and no one else. So we'll only recognize members of parliament and the uh, members of the Department of Justice led by Mr. Robertson. So we would not be recognizing any other hand. Mr. Robertson? Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, in response there to, I believe, uh, some aspects relating there to is currently sub uh, in LM versus three others in front of the Constitutional Court is being argued uh, in relation to um, cannabis and how do we deal with cannabis uh, for a person 18 years or younger. Um, currently, in terms of the Schools Act, there is provisions that do provide uh, for the confiscation of cannabis at the school. Um, I believe part of the order that uh, has been prepared uh, by the uh, Council for the Minister of Justice um, is to the effect that uh, the Schools Act will apply in such an instance. Um, there is a possibility that we can provide in uh, clause five of the bill that the minister may 
prohibit uh, a person from possessing um, cannabis in certain places specified by regulation. Um, that is an option that can be considered. Um, the general limitations in terms of um, this bill is to the effect that uh, a person, no person may um, consume um, cannabis uh, in a public place or um, use it in the presence of a non-consenting adult or even in the presence of children. That uh, equally applies uh, to a child who possesses alcohol. Um, that is still a criminal offence, even for a child in terms of this bill. But uh, there is amendments to the Child Justice Act to the effect that uh, it will amount to a divertible Schedule 1 offence. Uh, well, my submission is that uh, a child can also not further distribute cannabis amongst his spouse at school. That may amount to dealing in cannabis. Um, a child is not excluded in this bill, and even in terms of the High Court judgment and Ellen and three others from uh, such an offence, so it will apply, uh, but the child will be dealt with in terms of the Child Justice Act. So my submission is that currently there's adequate provisions to deal with that, and alternatively, we may consider uh, for a clause uh, to the effect, or rather provision in clause five to the effect that uh, the minister may uh, prohibit uh, the possession, consumption, uh, or smoking of cannabis in certain specific places. Uh, so we keep that open as an option. But yes, there is adequate legislative measures to deal with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you covered, Honorable Jara? Uh, yes, Chair, I'm covered, but can I? Uh, propose if maybe because uh, our sometimes we when we deal with these issues if we don't have a clause of that kind with uh, within this bin for people to go and you know apply another bill uh, use this in fact uh, if they want to use it and then they want to use this one now they have to go and check from e education and all that. Can we, is it possible, Chair, if I don't know, if I'm not out of order, also to cover that, like uh, Mr. Smith says, it, 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 it can be considered. So will you agree with me, Honorable Jale, that uh, we will still have this discussion when we deal with clause five? So your your concerns might you might raise them when we deal with clause five, um, where in the issue of um, uh, regulating the further, um, where it can, for instance, the issue of schools that you are raising, that uh, let's revisit it when we deal with uh, clause five. Would that be in order? Yes, chair. I'm okay, thank you, Jim. So can I assume that you have no problem with 18 subject to us re revisiting this uh, at, uh, when we deal with clause five? I don't have a problem, Chair, particularly because it talks to other uh, bills and, and other uh, laws of the country about 18 years as, a, as an age. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Before I come to you, Honorable Swart, can I go to Mr. Barbara Lutz, the Parliamentary Legal Advisor? She had her hand up. Um, no, Chair, apologies. Um, if it shows my hand is up, I, um, I don't see it from my side. Uh, but I, I concur with what Mr. Roberts has said about the, the age and the 18 and how we are reading the Prince Judgment Act at um, this moment. 
uh, in the absence of any other indication from the Constitutional Court. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lutz. Uh, Honorable Swartz. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to refer to Mr. Roberts. So when um, has the matter of the LM judgment, has it been argued before the Constitutional Court? And if so, are we expecting a judgment soon? Um, because that will give clarity on the restorative justice approach as well, which I raised previously. Then secondly, um, Chair, at some stage, I'd like Mr. Robertson to respond to our request that we should also consult with Public Health, the Department of Health. And um, I'm not sure whether it's, we raised it then, but the basic education on the impact as well, particularly of the usage of cannabis when it comes to children. Um, I think this is a major issue. I appreciate, again, the majority of the committee might decide on 80, but I do want us to fully appreciate as legislators the impact of what we, when we do pass legislation, the impact on the broader society and that we need that uh, input from other departments as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Robertson. Mr. Chief, this in, uh... There was a limited consultation with the Department of Health. Uh, I didn't consult with the Department of um, Education regarding this aspect. Um, I can consult it with uh, Professor Perry, and also Professor Vankis. Um, they did give me substantial input regarding harm uh, that may result from persons under the age of 25 years. But I must also indicate there is various other scientific articles available uh, that do not concur or support uh, uh, the notion that uh, ordinary like use of cannabis will necessarily lead to psychosis or will necessarily, to a large extent, affect brain development. I must also take into account that uh, alcohol and tobacco has similar effects on um, the developing brain. Um, and uh, in the, art the article of Professor Salman and others, um, there is a clear indicator that alcohol may, in some instances, be more harmful to young adults than cannabis. But again, it's subject to the quantity that is consumed and how regular a person uses that. Um, a young person that uh, consumes cannabis um, on an infrequent basis will probably not have the same as uh, brain development risk as that of um, a similar uh, young adult. They consume it on a daily basis. But that also applies to persons that consume alcohol. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, this matter has been well canvassed. Uh, I propose, um, honorable members, that for the sake of progress, um, because we are still going to come back to, to discussing the bill as a whole, where parties, uh, they will either indicate which areas they're not comfortable with, uh, they might even go to, an, to a point of not agreeing with the bill. Uh, but I think we do need progress, and I do think that uh, we have uh, for the purposes of the age, uh, sufficiently discuss uh, the matter uh, on the basis of majority. We cannot say sufficient consensus on the basis of majority, taking into consideration the discussions that we had last day, uh, last week, uh, that we can, uh, for, for the purposes of progress, agree that uh, we, are, we are proceeding with the age of 18, um, but uh, we should, I mean, some of the things would be clarified as the bill progresses, um, uh, including the issues that were raised by Honorable Jalia. We are still coming to clause five. 
uh, but we also do understand that there would uh, uh, there would not be sufficient consensus on all the clauses of the bill, um, but uh, I do think that uh, we will, um, once we have uh, concluded clause by clause, uh, parties will still uh, indicate areas where they would still want to uh, debate issues further. But can we agree for now that uh, we accept uh, 18 as a part of the working document? Uh, of, uh, of uh, meaning that we have agreed with clause with 18 for now as, 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 as part of our working draft. Is that in order, members? And we note the objection of Honorable Swart uh, that he prefers 21. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Chanchi. I saw your hand. Mm -hmm. I was saying that's in order, Chair, that we should proceed. Thank you, Thank you very much. Who is Mr. Manyeka? Is he part of the department or parliament? No, no, I'm part of uh, RCSA, African Government of South Africa. Sir. No, thank you very much. As, yeah. I've already, as I've already indicated, this process is now only for the department, parliamentary legal advisors, and members of the parliament. Uh, time for public comments. Uh, we have uh, we have exhausted that, um, but you would still have the opportunity to to make public comments when the bill goes to the NCOP. Thank you very much. Can we go to the next one? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, next proposal or proposed option to the current provisions of the bill relates to cannabis. Um, there was previously criticism that uh, any substance which contains THC is rather vague, and even substances with trace elements of THC uh, can be regarded as cannabis. Uh, option one previously did propose that we can probably increase it uh, to a substance more than 0.2% THC per volume. I did indicate uh, the effect thereof um, that the THC uh, quantity specified here um, is in breach of what is allowed in terms of the Medicines Act for human consumption, which is 0.001% THC in any substance. In other words, 1,000% uh, per volume of any product containing THC. Um, and uh, option two is a reworked draft of this. Um, and in terms of option two, what is proposed that uh, must prescribe um, a volume of THC per substance uh, which will qualify as cannabis, as that of 1% THC. Um, I know it's a substantial increase, but for purposes of the bill that authorizes to try to regulate uh, cannabis, a uh, 1% THC volume for adult consumption um, is probably a regulated uh, quantity of THC. But I do uh, propose the option to the effect that uh, for purposes of the other sections, um, that is section 4.3 um, of the bill, 5.5, five, and especially those relating to children, we may consider the amount of 0.2% THC per volume. And in um, an option to that paragraph, I even tone it down further to provide that, especially in relation to children, um, amount of 0.01% uh, THC per volume of a substance uh, may be considered. Section 6.5 deals with uh, providing THC to a child, or rather cannabis to a child. <clears throat> The other offenses where this is applicable, amongst others, section 4.3 of the bill, 
um, do deal with um, the safekeeping of cannabis in terms of regulations, mainly to protect children. Uh, the reference to um, clause 5.5 uh, deals with the consumption of a substance containing THC in a motor vehicle. And uh, the reference to sections 1A4 or 5 of the bill um, deals, amongst others, with uh, defense on a guardian to permit um, a child um, to deal uh, with uh, cannabis or to possess cannabis. Um, so that is probably a solution that can be considered, um, especially up, uh, paragraph B1, and as an option there to um, paragraph 2, or subparagraph 2, and then for purposes of the offense of children, um, the enhance, uh, or rather tone down volume of THC per volume in respect of children. Um, so that is what can be proposed. Um, I must also indicate that uh, the bill is based on a cannabis equivalency that is provided for in the schedule where certain cannabis like fresh fresh cannabis is equal to dried cannabis um, and uh, certain concentrates containing THC is also regarded as an equivalent to dried cannabis. Um, these amendments will not affect um, the equivalency uh, calculating measure in the schedules to the bill. Um, so that is the proposals. First proposal is to the effect that for purposes of the bill, we increase the amount of THC to 1% per volume unless it applies to section 435561, uh, 4 or 5, or 2C and 3, that. Um, and then the option is, for the purpose of that section, we may provide for 0.2% um, THC per volume option, or we can even make it equal to that that may be prescribed in respect of hemp in, this, in respect of... Uh, legislation that regulate him, that is to facilitate that uh, him can more readily be distributed. And also that certain persons, which is currently not allowed to deal with him or to participate in his participation, may participate in the cultivation of him. And then especially in respect of the provision of uh, THC or a substance containing that to a child, uh, we may consider uh, paragraph three. Um, I will propose that in respect of the offense in section or clause 65, um, that we favorably consider this highlighted option and the rest is open for discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. Honorable Horn, followed by Honorable Swart. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, may I ask, in terms of the, the second option there, which talks to a 1% THC per volume, what the, the evidence or the scientific basis would be for that proposal? Um, uh, I mean, it was 0.2, and then there was criticism, and the 0.2, I think, was 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 um, incorporated via other uh, legislation. Um, but I did not hear a substantiation as to what the one, where the one percent, on the basis of what the one percent proposal is being substantiated, and then in addition to that. Um, 
I would, would argue, Chair, um, on the basis of the last comments by, uh, by the department around the fact that we know that the commerci commercialization um, of cannabis and cannabis related products is on its way, whether I, I, I want, would want to ask the question whether we shouldn't then rather phrase these um, to already position this bill not to be inconsistent with possible com commercialization going forward. So that would mean in, a, in, in relation to the, the last comments that one would uh, rather than looking towards the the current legislation around medicine, phrase it in such a way that whatever is determined as the acceptable levels in terms of uh, future commercialization that that already be be factored in in terms of these these uh, definitions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh and then how will that work in practice? Because this is not a, a white paper or a police. It's supposed to be a bill. Then we, we will be making a bill, making some reference to a future policy that still needs to be developed. How do you, uh, or do you still want to think about it? I don't think it, it should be linked to a policy chair, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you, you already, the, earlier this morning talked about the possibility around regulations to on the on an interim basis allow for com commercialization so I, I don't think it needs to be linked to a policy but rather to any legislation that would regulate the commerce commercialization of the cannabis industry okay yeah, thank you very much thank you very much honorable Swartz. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the department's attempts to protect children more, uh, particularly with the new proposal um, dealing with clause 65, which um, reads any person who administers cannabis to a child is guilty of a class A offence. So I think that suggestion will also improve that issue. But I would like to ask um, Mr. Robertson, and in line with what Mr. Horn said, the broader issue was this is a very narrow bill. The implications, you obliquely referred to the implications for um, medicine, for, for hemp in particular, and we know there is that hemp is defined later in the bill, and there's also a reference to, um, in the definition of hemp, uh, about the concentration of THC in leaves, which has may be prescribed, um, and that is in terms of other legislation, I presume. So is there not a contradiction then when we are talking about a certain concentration of cannabis here, which might exclude the issues relating to hemp and medicinal usage of low levels of THC? Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Jeperson. Um, uh, this relates to a substance, uh, which is not to say the flower or a cup of the cannabis plant. Um, if one look at the literature, you will see that uh, a cup or quantity of cups um, contains up to 18% THC. So in a glass of water, if one convert the cup to water, there will be 18% THC in a, a cup that can be used. But uh, the substance here, uh, previously was undefined and could have been used to interpret it in relation to um, what is generally known uh, in science, was applies to uh, cannabis, uh, but uh, there was a request that we specify or regulate it rather, mainly to exclude substances that contain trace elements of THC. Obviously, 
one can refer to CBD oil, which will contain trace elements of uh, THC. And that's already available uh, on the market. So this is an attempt for purposes of the bill to indicate a more realistic approach to the quantity of any uh, quantity of THC in any substance. It's already well below um, uh, the current uh, COP percentage of THC, which I did indicate can be up to 18%. Um, but yes, to an extent, uh, one make, may make edibles or cannabis infused products that do contain uh, a certain amount of THC. And if that is not regulated, uh, it may give, give rise to that the person may consume it while in the vehicle. Uh, and you can always indicate, yes, uh, it is below a certain element or a percentage that was determined. Um, I did indicate previously that we, for purposes of certain offenses, um, we do prescribe a lower quantity of THC per volume. And that, amongst others, relate to driving of a motor vehicle or supplying cannabis to another. But for the remainder of the sections of the bill, and to enforce it appropriately, uh, one may or need at least to specify um, a higher volume of THC in that substance to regulate it effectively. I did refer previously to the Medicines Act, which amongst others exclude uh, or rather provide a percentage of 0.2% or less THC if it's not for human consumption, then uh, in relation to human consumption, 0.001% uh, or less um, THC restriction. For purposes of the bill, the 0.001 or less restriction is totally unworkable. Uh, we allow the possession of cannabis cops, which may contain up to 18% THC, but why, for purposes of the other provisions of the Act, limit uh, the THC quantum, uh, quantity in any substance uh, to a extreme low amount, such as 0.2% of the volume. It's nonsensical. So this is a proposal, at least, to increase it with due regard to the effect that uh, one can probably use it uh, in contravention of the act, to possess, possess uh, such substance in contravention of the act. Um, but to enforce it broader, prescribe a more realistic amount of THC that will have a psychoactive effect on a person. So that is my explanation. Thank you. Um, if I may go back to Honorable Horn, I don't, I'm not sure whether he would be convinced, but I think his first question was, what is the scientific basis? Um, Mr. Chaperson, um, I did indicate that uh, in relation to a cop, the flower of cannabis, it contains up to 18% THC. So that is usually your starting point. Um, how you calculate uh, a volume of THC. So you allow a person to possess uh, the substance that is a cop that contains up to 18% per volume, but uh, you restrict it uh, to a, a low amount of 0.02% THC per volume in respect of any other substance. Um, it's a kind of contradiction. And I did explain there need to be appropriate amount 
at least to regulate certain substances. Uh, that is used, possessed, or consumed uh, in terms of the will or in contravention thereof, that has got a uh, appropriate amount of THC um, that has got a psychoactive or it's called a psychoactive uh, effect on a person and not restricted to anything that contains a trace element or to such volume of THC where a person will probably need to consume an extreme large quantity of the product before it has a direct effect on them. So that's more or less how I can explain it. I do understand the 18%, but how do you come to this more than, not more than 1% and the other one uh, with respect to section 4.3? Uh, the 0.2%. How do you come to those percentages? Uh, Mr. Chairperson, um, if we look at some other countries, uh, there are certain limit, limitations that is imposed on edibles, cannabis-infused products that may be sold to persons in general. Um, it varies though. Um, this is actually, let's call it an arbitrary calculation or suggestion that was made. And that is for, to make the act enforceable and to regulate the substance. One may increase it to 2%, uh, but my submission is to make it substantially less than 1%. Um, will not serve the objectives uh, of the act. Um, the 0.2% uh, THC, I did discuss it previously, um, indicating that uh, that is the lower amount that is provided for by the Medicines Act, but that is for non-human consumption and that the current 0.001%, 1,000 uh, per volume that is prescribed is unworkable for purposes of this act and that we should at least mm. consider a higher amount of 0.2% THC. 0.2% THC is the starting point of uh, the hemp uh, uh, specification. Um, I think that is used in the EU and the uh, United States, which classify him, amongst others, as a plant or substance thereof that uh, contains not less than 0.2% THC. Um, and uh, one must also consider it in the context that um, a hemp product or a substance that contains 0.2% THC uh, will have a limited psychoactive, or let's call it a drug effect on a person. We need to consume a substantial amount thereof. In South Africa's development of uh, how we regulate um, cannabis, THC, medicines, and uh, in the future, probably edibles, cannabis-infused products, the standards still need to be established. So as a starting point, one can probably use the limited 0.2% THC as a first reference standard. But uh, my submission is that in respect of... Um, some of the sections provided here, 0.2% um, may be workable, but in other instances, uh, it probably needs to be further limited, um, especially concerning children or where you provide substances containing THC to a child. Um, due to the fact that uh, 0.2% THC in a medicinal product 
um, is substantial and it's regulated by the Medicines Act. Um, so it's also arbitrary determination, but with reference to uh, at least a possible determination of uh, the limited quantity which hemp may contain uh, if legislation is enacted to regulate that. So the 1% THC is to effectively try to regulate uh, the consumption, use, possession of certain substances containing THC. It's substantially less than um, your COP, but it's necessary for regulatory purposes due to the fact that uh, the provision or distribution of certain substances uh, needs to be more, uh, more effectively controlled and enforced. And uh, a 1% THC volume is therefore suggested in that regard. In respect of certain other provisions, I did indicate then that uh, 0.2% the volume may be considered uh, since it serves the purposes for which the other provisions provide. Um, and that is probably as far as I can take it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Hon, Honorable Hon. Yes, you... Chair, I, yes. I hear the, the, the explanation. The only question that then I think as a consequence must arise is if we, and I think this has been more or less, even if it's not um, welcome from, in all corners or from all stakeholders, our approach has been that we want to, through the adop adoption of this bill, give effect to the constitutional court order. So the, the question I think we must, must ask ourselves is if the COP then contains an 18%, uh, or up to an 18% THC levels. Um, and, and, and because of the fact that that was uh, the, the, the plant, the, the, the COP was the topic of, of the constitutional court judgment, what would then be the effect if we then in a, in a more stricter way regulate related products? I'm not in, 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 in asking that question, I'm not advocating that we shouldn't. I'm just back at the point to say then, uh, for me personally, I want to hear then that this percentage per volume is, is the tipping point at which uh, the, the effect of THC is similar to, to smoking the cup or the parts of the plant. I'm, I'm no, 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 um, no expert on that, but but if one uh, looks back at the the judgment and the obligation on Parliament, I think that's the pertinent question. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you are still on the scientific basis for this arbitrary uh, regulation. Yes, and 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 I'm afraid that if we, as Mr. Robert says, for the for regulation purposes go very low and there might be a good argument to be made out that we should that on that basis the 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 legislation will be attacked as not giving full effect to the judgment thanks jay thank you very much uh, honorable swart okay i appreciate the difficulty with the percentages when it comes to the department and I think Mr. Robertson did indicate the arbitrariness of this. So I think we need to be very mindful of different responses from one person to the next, depending on that person's physical attributes. However, I would like to just ask him again about the point two point two percent when it comes to the impact that this clause will have on your commercialization of very low levels of THC. Um, such as your hemp and your medicinal products, um, I'm still not convinced. And I think there were public submissions in this regard that under South Africa's 
environment and circumstances that European 0.2% was too low um, for the, and, and we understand that's in terms of the medicinal act, there are regulations there, but I want to understand if we say 0.2% here related to hemp products that can criminalize a lot of the um, cultivation in the medicinal products of hemp products. Um, and I think that is a concern given the fact that I think Mr. Roberts again indicated even on that, on the 1% and on the 0.2% that it is pretty arbitrary. So I think we really need to apply our minds to the broader implications of this aspect. Yes, we are approaching the, this from a regulatory model and not from a, a commercialization model, but we do have to understand the implication it will have when there is broader commercialization. And in our, my interest is, is in those uh, the particular issue of, of hemp and medicinal usage. Thank you, Jen. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Robertsa. Uh, Mr. Jason, um, uh, cannabis uh, percentage uh, determinations. Um, if one look at everything, a lot of factors need to be taken into account. Amongst others, a cup may contain up to 18% um, THC. Um, there's a limitation of uptake of um, THC if one smoke it. Um, it's, it's uh, well, let me. There's, there's uh, various documents that's available in this aspect. Um, and even there is not complete consensus, but uh, one may consider to some extent uh, for regulatory purposes, increase uh, the substance the content um, to anything up to, let's say 5%. Most instances, uh, there is instances uh, where substance uh, is consumed that the intake of THC in the body is more than ordinary smoking. Even if you eat a, eat a cup that has been decarboxylated, there will be a greater uptake of THC up to a certain percentage than the person that smokes it. Um, and there's not actually very clear guidelines that can be uh, followed. So what is proposed here is to facilitate regulations, especially in respect of substances. One can make a, a substance fudge uh, that uh, contains a certain amount of THC. I must remember uh, that it needs to be regulated, uh, especially regarding the distribution thereof, um, the places where it may be consumed. Um, so it's a mere limitation uh, calculated on a possible drug effect that is proposed here. Now, 0.2% uh, or less um, of a substance, one must really ask the question, how much need to be consumed to have a drug effect? So rather determine a realistic amount of THC that certain not easily controllable substances must contain uh, to effectively regulate that. And uh, that is probably as far as I can take it. Um, I did previously discuss the 0.2% THC per volume um, insofar as it's rather 0.2% limitation on them. And I also did indicate that uh, it's dependent on the South African circumstances, um, what must be prescribed. I believe in Australia, uh, in certain territories, a 1% THC um, 
limitation is imposed on them, um, substantially higher than the international standard. The international standard is between 0.2% to 0.3%. And uh, if one look at, amongst others, um, the Australian legislation that regulate them, one will see that it is strictly controlled. And it's obviously to deal with the higher amount of THC that is allowed. Um, and that is as far as I can take it. Thank you. But there is an issue that uh, Honorable Horn raised. Uh, that if this legislation is taken to its attack in court, we would be asked the same question that he has asked. Uh, the scientific basis, what is a tipping point? And uh, I, we do understand the difficulties that you are faced with, but I think it would be important that uh, we can't advance an argument of arbitrariness, uh, let's say in the Constitutional Court. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, yes, it's acknowledged. But one must remember that uh, cannabis is applicable to various provisions in the bill. It first allows adult person to possess a certain amount of cannabis, um, to use cannabis, uh, to be in possession in private of a certain amount of cannabis, and it even allows the distribution of cannabis, uh, a prescribed amount. Uh, my um, take on the matter or is to the effect that uh, it's, it will be hard to argue that uh, to say that uh, a substance that contains 1% THC um, is an unconstitutional determination of what may be possessed, distributed, etc. Mm -hmm. um, it is mainly there to regulate um, a certain substance containing THC. On the other hand, uh, I do concede that uh, we can probably increase it to 18% THC, but uh, it will become problematic uh, uh, to some extent to enforce that. One must remember that uh, there is provision for cannabis equivalency that deals with uh, uh, cannabis concentrates which do specify that uh, cannabis concentrates um, of 0.25 um, gram is equal to 1% dried cannabis. And uh, the first paragraph A, the COPS, and uh, the cannabis substance containing THC is in between the two poles that is set in the bowl. Firstly, that uh, if it's a cannabis concentrate, uh, where it's a high concentration of THC, it's limited. But this per se does not um, actually, to a large extent, um, or, or let me rather say, it's not substantially regulated um, in terms of the bill. One can go as far as some legislation of foreign countries amongst Canada, which will tell you that one liter of uh, cannabis infused liquid is equal to um, one gram dried cob. But uh, 
it's also an arbitrary determined amount. In most other jurisdictions, it's an arbitrary determined amount. Also, if you look at cannabis infused products, uh, in other legislation, uh, foreign jurisdictions, um, it will, amongst others, provide that 500 grams cannabis infused products um, equals one gram of ripe cannabis. One can argue that their legislation probably also uh, is arbitrary to the extent that uh, it's not possible to increase um, the content of THC in that edibles or liquids that does not concentrate to amounts that are substantially similar to the cup itself. But they also deem it necessary from a regulatory point to establish at least a minimum standard um, to regulate what may be possessed, distributed, or used in certain circumstances. Um, one can go as far as to indicate that uh, a substance contains 18% THC, but uh, the effect thereof is that uh, a person may in private then consume a substance that contains 17% THC and it's not an offense. There need to be an absolute limitation um, to determine what can, amongst others, be consumed in private um, in certain circumstances or be distributed or possessed under certain circumstances um, with specific reference to the effect or drug effect of that substance. And that is my answer. Thanks. Members, can I suggest that uh, we mull over this uh, definition and these two options? Uh, maybe we can come back to it tomorrow. Uh, we reflect on it. Um, but there is still one area that has not been covered, uh, that of Mr. Horn's second question. Uh, if we take this and put it, especially the 1% uh, under regulations uh, to, uh, to facilitate the issue of commercialization, uh, how would that be catered for? So, Mr. Chairperson, um, I didn't hear the question. I was saying that uh, Honorable Horn was saying that in view that there is, uh, we still have to ensure that this bill uh, fa does facilitate the commercialization of uh, cannabis. Uh, so he was making a suggestion to the effect that um, it might not be appropriate to put, in fact, maybe what we might need to consider is to put uh, the, uh, the one percent, if I'm correct, uh, under a regulation, but it has to take into consideration the fact that this, these regulations must facilitate uh, the commercialization of cannabis. Uh, before you proceed to answer Honorable Horn, uh, did I understood you correctly? Yes, Chair, that was more or less what I asked, and that was, I think, also in specific reference to the comments Mr. Robertson made regarding hemp and specifically commercial hemp products. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Robertson, um, I can see you're scrolling down. Are you suggesting that it is going to be covered uh, as we are going down? Uh, no, Mr. Chairperson. Um, look, it's possible to uh, submit it to him to provide that uh, regulations need to be made to prescribe a limitation on a, a, a substance containing THC. Mm. Um, well, one can do that. Uh, 
it's not uh, impossible. Must remind the members uh, of the case State versus Smith, and um, that among others uh, provided that uh, in relation to offences uh, in terms of the Drug and Drug Trafficking Act, it's impermissible for among others uh, to prescribe or include certain substances um, in the Drug and Drug Trafficking Act, uh, which by implication uh, create new offenses. The question may well be asked then, if um, this is left to uh, uh, a minister to determine, will it not per se also uh, amount to a creation of a certain offence that has not been approved by Parliament in a mm. broad sense? Mm. I argue that. There may be justifiable limitations in that regard, and specifically in this instances, but a general uh, trend of that case is that if it's an offence, it should be clearly defined, purpose of parliament to define it, it should not be left to the executive. I will consider this further and give further inputs uh, in this regard tomorrow. Uh, and probably also provide uh, a better explanation um, with specific reference to foreign jurisdictions in this regard. Um, and insofar as uh, legislation that uh, facilitate commercialization um, of uh, cannabis, um, one must look at the foreign uh, legislation of foreign jurisdictions. Um, it's regulated to the extreme. They do uh, specify certain limitations on cannabis edibles that may be distributed or may uh, be, be sold. Uh, they do specify a minimum content of, or rather a maximum content of THC. Uh, so it's to a large extent regulated the under. Um, possible conflict here with uh, uh, such proposed legislation. Um, to accommodate that, uh, a possible conflict, yes, it's preferable to leave it open to the executive to determine a quantity of THC that the substance may contain. Um, and yes, let me rather give an additional discussion on this issue tomorrow. Thank you. Tomorrow, okay. Uh, Mr. Swart, Honorable Swart. So I, I just wanted to um, ask Mr. Robert, so when he considers foreign jurisdictions, and I'm sure members of the various industries will probably raise this when they have uh, other public hearings in the NCFP, to what degree do foreign, the, does the consideration of foreign jurisdictions impact on the particular agricultural circumstances that prevail in South Africa when one considers various crops and one considers various impacts? And, and I'll get back to the medicinal and the, um, the hemp, where we have a certain point Two percent. You indicated Australia as one percent. Now, could that not be the THC levels? Could that not be because of the particular agricultural circumstances in Australia or the climate, which is similar to South Africa, which is far hotter, and where we in South Africa point to point two percent? You could exclude large numbers of farmers from Eastern Cape, for example, that made submissions to this portfolio committee, uh, where we are using a foreign jurisdiction and not taking into consideration the particular climate and agriculture of South Africa. So I think it's something, as we debate this issue, one doesn't, does not want to exclude a lot of potential beneficiaries. Uh, and I'm, re I'm referring particularly to hemp medicinal, but it could apply to others as well due to the particular climate 
agriculture of South Africa, where we consider maybe European standards, which are different climatic conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think that would be important, uh, Honorable uh, Swart, because that would go back to the question that Honorable Horn raised, uh, which is part of the scientific basis, because the issue, the difference in climate is part of that scientific basis. So this is why I think it's important that uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Roberts uh, uh, would need to come back and take all of those things into consideration not just uh, issues of foreign jurisdiction, um, but we must, uh, as, we, as we make reference to those foreign jurisdiction, take into consideration those pertinent issues like your climate, which is part of a, a scientific reality that might distinguish us from some of those countries. Um, Mr. Chaperson, I believe um, that was thoroughly considered uh, mm. in respect of the bill. That is why the bill do not provide for a specific, specific percentage of TACC in respect of him, um, and uh, that it need to be prescribed in terms of such legislation. Their consideration was paid amongst others to um, various agricultural factors, climate differentiations between countries, Etc. that may influence a suitable hemp product. Uh, it was recommended by other departments that we should determine um, a percentage of between 0.2% to 0.3% THC for hemp. The bill did not uh, make provision, therefore, for the circumstances that was raised due to the fact that our climate may be different, the product may not be suitable in South Africa. Um, and uh, that is why we leave it open for determination later on. Thanks. Okay. So members will come back to this clause uh, tomorrow. Uh, can we move to the next clause? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, I did discuss, uh, I'm not going to deal with the uh, other um, uh, options that was proposed. I think we should rather deal with uh, the main issues here or some of the new main amendments that is proposed. The first one relate to uh, sub clause 2. Uh, sub clause 2 of um, clause 1, we provide that uh, legislation may authorize uh, the cultivation uh, and distribution of um, hemp, uh, sorry, of uh, cannabis for, uh, amongst others, commercial purposes. Um, there was, however, some criticism that we did receive from other departments involved in the commercialization of hemp, that uh, those want to probably don't go far enough uh, to indicate uh, that commercialization is allowed in South Africa. One must remember that uh, the Drug and Drug Trafficking Act give effect to South Africans' international obligations under the uh, drug treaties. The Drug and Drug Trafficking Act is uh, under the administration of the cabinet minister responsible for justice. And uh, it, there was an indication that uh, we must make the position clear that uh, we, in contravention of our international obligations, do provide for uh, commercialization of cannabis. Um, to facilitate that, a uh, new option has been proposed that specifically uh, provide for commercial activities in respect of recreational cannabis. <laughs> And the new clause uh, makes it clear that 
commercial activities in the respect of cannabis is authorized. Uh, in other words, this is done in contravention of our international obligations. Uh, it's subject that national legislation must be enacted to authorize and regulate commercial activities in respect of recreational cannabis. And uh, the new clause then proposed that such uh, national legislation uh, must, amongst others, uh, specifically authorize and regulate commercial activities in respect of recreational cannabis under a licensing scheme may provide for different classes or categories of licenses that may be issued in respect thereof. Um, it must provide for criteria requirements uh, that must be considered for the issuing of a license. Um, and these criteria must, amongst others, encourage local economic growth, employment, creation, uh, empowerment of uh, rural communities, must promote micro and small businesses, uh, must provide for uh, or take into consideration uh, local skills and skills transfer, must have regard to BBE, and in particular in this regard to the Rastafarian community and other cultural and religious communities, uh, which may have been prejudiced in the past on the basis of the use or association with cannabis, it must provide for measures to prevent and minimize harm associated with recreational cannabis. It must provide for a demand reduction uh, mechanism, it must provide for population monitoring of the use associated with cannabis. Um, uh, sorry, the, the, the uh, monitoring of arms associated with cannabis abuse must provide for public education and assistance in relation to matters of cannabis safety, harm minimization, and other matters of interest to the consumers of cannabis. Such legislation must prevent access to recreational cannabis by persons under the age of 18 years must prohibit the advertising uh, of cannabis. Uh, it must provide a framework for testing the quality, strength, and safety of cannabis. There must be effective oversight mechanisms, regulate the packing, labeling, and storage of cannabis, regulate the purchase of cannabis, they provide for the establishment of a national cannabis advisory committee um, that must uh, assist with such measures. Um, and uh, there's also a prohibition, amongst others, relating to uh, the, uh, the advertising or rather um, make available or influence minors and relating to cannabis use um, and it provides for certain definitions uh, to facilitate uh, this clause. Um, so this is a measure that addresses the criticism by the other departments involved in possible commercialization of recreational cannabis. Uh, although there is uh, certain aspects that must be covered by national legislation uh, in terms of uh, sub clause 3 of the option, uh, it does not uh, limit such legislation to provide for anything else. Um, Yes, and uh, I'm going to stop there.
Okay. Members, any comments? Camera will on. Okay. I think we need some time to consider this. Um, and I would, well, firstly want to ask to what extent, for example, has this is this the product of also some interaction with, for example, the Department of Trade and Industry? But immediately at the outset, just at the first glance of looking at these proposed regulations, the one thing that struck me and which I must be critical of is that it wouldn't seem that some form of already existing knowledge or skills or expertise around the cultivation and the processing of cannabis and cannabis related products is not one of the seems not to be one of the criteria for the issuing of um of 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 um of the license now he talks uh, mr roberts highlights there the availability of local skills and skill transfer that so that would mean that that anybody with without um uh, having specialized skills themselves would be able to obtain the license for as long as they then involve those with the skills. And I think one of the, the, the main takeaways I've uh, uh, gathered from our public participation process is that we cannot com enable commercialization, which would effectively um, create a situation where those who have been part of the, the, the industry up to now, even though it might have been an illegal industry, are sidelined. Uh, yeah, on broad-based Black economic empowerment, similarly, uh, I mean, can even be, a, in certain, certain respects, a, a negative requirement. Um, I see Mr. Roberts also highlights the Rastafarian community. And um, I want to say respectfully, I don't think uh, the Rastafarian community are necessarily exclusively um, black. Um, that's in any event, event the way I've understood it. So my plea is just that I think we must firstly get feedback as to what, ex to what extent is this the product then of engagement with other relevant departments. But secondly, I would think that one of the major criteria that must be built into these these regulations should be to the effect that that those who have built up the specialized knowledge and skills over the years should be in the inside lane to to also make use of the commercial opportunities and that it should not they should not be effectively put at the mercy of 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 the established commercial role players in this country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Juan. Any other hands? Uh, Mr. Roberts, sir? Mr. Robertson, can we have, uh, it's 11 o'clock, can we meet at, can we have a 10 minutes break? Sure. Yes, and come back at quarter past. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Can we proceed? We can. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Bredenbach. Mr. Robertson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. First, regarding consultation uh, with other departments, I believe uh, uh, the new clause specifically um, provided for at the request of DTI. We did previously propose that uh, we may, uh, as an interim, provide for the regulations to facilitate commercialization. I think uh, the response there to was to the extent that uh, no need for that. We just need a clear authorization to deal with commercialization and they can proceed on that basis. Regarding um, especially section three, um, there was no broad consultation on this, but I believe if one look at uh, uh, the policy document that has been developed um, in respect of possible commercialization of cannabis. Um, some of the issues uh, provided in that policy document is addressed in this issue. And that is uh, a policy document uh, in respect uh, where various departments um, uh, participate in the development. Um, some of the aspects that were inserted in clause three um, mainly relates to comments that were received um, during the public consultation process, amongst others um, to regulate um, cannabis commercialization uh, and what should be provided for and there should be certain limitations. There should be harm reduction measures. I can refer to, amongst others, Professor Perry's um, uh, submission. We did request uh, monitoring, um, et cetera. Uh, the Medical Association representation that also did request certain provisions um, for armor reduction. Um, what was further taken into account is uh, substance abuse and rehabilitation legislation of South Africa. It's based on the principle of regulating the availability of certain substances and harm reduction measures and to restrict availability there too. But I have considered uh, legislation in foreign jurisdictions um, especially relating to um, harm reduction measures, etc., that is catered for um, in clause 3a. Um, but again, I must say there was no extensive consultation on this matter. But uh, it caters for uh, uh, aspects that is addressed in the the policy document that uh, have been developed. Um, regarding um, consideration of current expertise, uh, provision can be inserted here under to provide for that. Um, I could even make uh, or limit uh, the considerations, make it discretionary to substitute must with may. Um, and I must again refer to the kind of exemption, the limitation exemption that is provided for in 3A that uh, national legislation may provide for anything else. So that is my response to the questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any uh, honorable sort? 
Thank you, Chair. Well, Chair, this clause is uh, at this stage changes the whole framework of the bill from purely regulatory to now include the commercial model. And I, at this very late stage, I appreciate this is coming from DTI, but obviously one has serious concerns about this, particularly with the Roman three, which is a criteria which indicates must include. Now, you have large numbers of operators or, or farmers or people that are growing uh, cannabis for recreational use who are at, mo at the moment operating illegally, they would like to obviously legalize their operations and we have a certain view on that. We don't necessarily agree with that, but I'm looking at the, at the broader bill and the implications and now you are including here a must in other words, only broad-based black economic empowerment or Rastafarian communities will be able to legalize themselves. So I think this has consequences for many, many people. That's your Roman three double F. Um, and that is a must. You've got a must. M must include. So it's compulsory. So only, from my reading, only those segments of society will be able to apply for licenses. And, and I, th I think that is very exclusionary. And I think that that would require consultation with the various industries that have made presentations to this portfolio committee. I think that, Chair, um, that could be, but I think this is a, a dramatic change um, in the bill and whether that consultation process takes place now or at an NCOP level, it will be requiring because this has an impact on probably every person that has made a submission on this bill. This is a new clause. Um, but I, I think we reserve our discussions, our positions on this. I think we're well known, but I think to more generally speaking, I would think that many people would want to comment on the provisions if I remember correctly, the one concerns that one of the concerns that a number of people made was the limited licensing permits that were available and political uh, influence in the awarding of those limited permits at the moment. And I think these are issues that we're going to have to consider when this clause is considered by us. We appreciate that it comes from DTI. But to what degree has there been consultation broader? And I understand there's a policy document. I understand the master plan and this type of thing. But to what degree has there been proper consultation in this whole process? And I'll leave it at that, Chair. I think that this is, will be an ongoing discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Honorable Swart. Uh, there was also an issue of the exorbitant amount of uh, money that was required for obtaining those licenses. Um, yes, indeed. No, thank you very much, Honorable Horn. Yes, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I, I share the sentiments of the Honorable Swart regarding public participation and the require, absolute requirement for meaningful public participation on every aspect of the bill. So I, I would think we, in any event, would have to ask uh, our trusted advisors like Dr. Lewitz for an opinion as to whether we, on the basis of the public participation that has concluded in the NA at least, could proceed to, to, to include such a, uh, uh, such a clause now and whether we wouldn't fall foul of the of not having subjected a, a, a essential part or a, a material part of the of the bill to public participation, that's the one aspect. The, the second aspect, and now I must immediately admit that I I don't have it in front of me, but maybe Chair, you would be able to to remind us what the current tagging of the bill is, and then I think. We, we should consider as well, if it is a Section 75 bill at this stage, what the implications would be for tagging, um, specifically um, 
I think as is quite clear of the information on the table and taking the comments of the Honorable Swart on into consideration that there is already in different provinces, different, different informal, if we can put it that way, um, entities through which, which in a in a commercial way already deal with this, um, and one would think that that it might then require that on a provincial basis, um, public participation also be be undertaken as required by Section seventy six. If it's if the bill is not a Section seventy six bill at this stage, thanks. Thank you. Uh, can I allow Mr. Roberts and then Dr. Lutz? Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, one must remember, was one allowed for an enactment, uh, or rather for the commercialization of cannabis? But this is subject to subsection two. Other legislation must be enacted to regulate commercial activities. Um, so, the act, uh, this bill itself, did not actually regulate that. Mm -hmm. um, just authorize other legislation to be enacted. Um, Subclause three uh, does make provision for certain considerations or aspects um, that must be considered. Uh, by such legislation and must be provided for. Um, I can change the word must to may, uh, et cetera, uh, or might uh, use other wording to the effect that uh, it's preferable that it should be considered or be taken into account, et cetera. So this clause does not change um, this is my submission the tagging of the rule. It actually refers everything further to the enactment of other legislation by appropriate department. Mm -hmm. It does not itself provide for anything like that. Mm -hmm. But the main provision that was requested is to specifically authorize commercial activities. Uh, in contravention of our international drug control obligations. That's my response there to thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lutz. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, with your permission and that of the members, um, I would like to just study this uh, this clause or the proposals uh, brought now. Um, Mr. Roberts and I briefly discussed the, a concept like this, but this is the first time I'm actually seeing the wording. And um, as chair and the members know, like a word or a comma, like uh, I, I think it Robert says now, must or may can can influence an interpretation. So if I can um, request the committee's indulgence to allow me the time to study this and just consult with my office as well, and then um, I can come back on the section uh, on the tagging and the public participation. My gut feeling on the public participation is uh, to err on the side of caution always. And if something goes wider than, um, than the bill as it was, it's always good. We, I know the the PC on trade sometimes does selective clauses if they add something. Uh, perhaps uh, our uh, colleague or my colleagues from a procedural perspective can advise on that. But um, yeah, if I can just request the committee's indulgence chair to not give an off the cuff uh, response when I haven't really studied the um, the proposal word for word. How much time do you need? Mm -hmm. uh, Chair, I can try by tomorrow, but I, I don't know if I'm going to get hold of all my superiors uh, before then, but I can attempt uh, to, to do it by tomorrow, um, uh, but I can't, uh, I can't promise. Um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's the first time I'm seeing it now. It, it looks quite, uh, quite lengthy. Um, I'm, I will do my best to have an oral response by tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, Mr. Roberts, let's go to clause one. Uh, 
no sorry uh, of that of that uh, of that uh, clause we're talking to yes but members the issue here um i think also which uh, dr lord should be taken into consideration i think is the response given by uh, mr roberts which said subject to the enactment of a national legislation contemplated in section subsection two, which is not this legislation. Which means that national legislation can either come from DTI, DTIC, or from agriculture or any other department, but that will be subject subject to that national legislation, then the following should be considered. Is that not correct, Mr. Roberts? That, that is correct, Mr. Chairperson. It's other departments must act. Uh, so that is, is that this legislation. So this one is just more or less an, an, AB, an ABLA, but it's not regulating it here. No, it's not regulating it here. Uh, the only thing that I did indicate is that it authorizes commercial activities for recreational cannabis use in contravention of our international obligations. Uh, okay. And that's it. Okay, so I'm not sure whether Honorable Janja, you, you had raised your hand. I saw your name here. Then it will be Honorable Horn and Honorable Swartz. No, no, it was me, Che. I was, I was, yeah. uh, I was, I was confirming and aligning myself with your, with your indication in relation to this enactment. Yes. No, thank you very much, Honorable Horn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Che. Um, I don't, I don't want to split hairs about it, but but I, I think this is more than an, a clause that would enable other departments to enact legislation. This effectively creates an interim uh, framework for commercial for the commercialization of, of, of the cannabis industry. Um, and then if we take into account the the time that sometimes uh, the, uh, the, which it sometimes takes the time periods before legislation that is in the in the offing ultimately is tabled in parliament mm -hmm. the interim period can can stretch for for years on end mm -hmm. uh, so therefore uh, I, I think we should be very careful to to just include this and specifically include this in the absence of, of proper public participation, even if it's intended as an interim uh, regulatory measure. Thank you, Jay. So, Honorable Horn, if the worst happens, what is your suggestion? So no, I think we I think Jay, we must listen to what Dr. Lewitz advises. Hmm. Um, and if her advice is that we can, we should not proceed to include this in the absence of proper public participation, we shouldn't. Um, so I, I would think we should park the, the, the debate on this until we've received that advice. But, but um, yeah, my, my, my firm view is that I, I don't think we should, we should accept that this is an interim measure that will necessarily uh, apply to regulation for a very short period um, of a year or two years. Um, we, I mean, we, we all know of some of the pieces of legislation just in respect of our own portfolio committee, which has been promised for years on end and just never reaches reach our shores. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. Um, Members, shouldn't we, for 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 the purposes of this discussion, just uh, wait for Dr. Lutz, and then we can engage further on this one. 
after we have listened to Dr. Lutz's uh, opinion on the, this issue. Uh, Honorable Swart. Very briefly, I want to agree with Mr. Horn um, about the, the, the issue that this goes a bit further than what Mr. Roberts has said. At the very least, the word must must be replaced with may, otherwise we are legislating here for what that future legislation must say. Um, but I think that is the, the caution. Um, and I, 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 would, I look forward to hearing what Mr. Lewis, Ms. Lewis, uh, Dr. Lewis says, but I do think that we need to be very careful about the further legislation that we are putting here. Although it, is to, it says subject to further legislation being passed, this is, in effect, we are giving guidelines. So there might have to be a conflict of laws clause as well, but it definitely cannot be must, because if we put the word must, in, then we are, in fact, legislating. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Glennis Bredenbach, do you still want to speak on this matter? Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. No, I'm covered by, by your suggestion that we wait for the uh, views of Dr. Lewis, so that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Lutz, uh, we will um, check with you tomorrow uh, if you are ready, um, because uh, uh, this could be um, a serious procedural matter. So we would want to, to get a, a proper opinion on this uh, issue and whether um, if if the bill, I think that is one of the issues that maybe you might want to advise us on. Um, this, for instance, this bill is passed with this clause, and then there is further, I mean, the, then the House adopts the bill with this clause, and then it further goes for public hearings from the side of the NCOP with this clause, and then there would have been public hearings. Would well, that still fatally, in terms of procedure, uh, because the, N the NA did not publish this for public comments, would that still be fatal? I think that should also be part of what you should be guiding us on. Honorable Janji. No, Chair, it's just a request uh, from you that uh, perhaps with your guidance, uh, I don't know if we should not uh, allow Dr. Lutz a bit more of a time than tomorrow yes. to, to to get a proper advice chair so i don't know i mean i don't see any harm in us saying um don't rush this only for tomorrow so that we we, we not uh, yes we must move with speed as i always say but not just rush this issue so you might have to guide us there 